And if you don't like my politics, don't buy my book. Don't read them. And if you don't like my politics, don't buy my book. Don't read them. Girls read comics. Girls have always read comics. Problem solved. White boys. Comic book reader. Don't buy my book. Don't buy my book. I, I literally can't even think. We can have a little conference on that. Um, Would you please get your politics out of my comic books? Don't read them. What comic books are you reading? What comic books are you reading? Would you please get your politics out of my comic books? Don't read them. What comic books are you reading? What comic books are you reading? Comic book reader. Um, uh, comic book reader. Uh, and uh, may I curse? White boys, don't read them. We're very worried about comics right now. Independent comic sales are down. Mainstream comic sales are down. Everything in the mid list is way down. You don't make a lot of money that way. There is nothing inherently masculine of heroism. There's nothing inherently masculine heroism. Girls read comics. Girls have always read comics. Problem solved. Magic. Going into the red on singles and not coming out until the trades. Stores are closing. You don't make a lot of money that way. So don't. Comics are booming. The world does revolve around the sun. The world revolves around the sun, and I am a glorious ray of light. Love one another. Be kind to each other. When people make mistakes, be quick to forgive them. Little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. If the bad mockingbird won't sing, Mama's gonna buy a diamond ring. I don't think you're ever going to. You have a sexy thought. You're probably trying to be a sexy thought. It's a little creepy, ladies. I don't know shit. What are you trying to be a sexy thought? It's a little creepy, ladies. What are you doing? I don't know shit. I don't think you're ever going to. I don't know shit. If you shit. want to be treated like the rest of the guys, put your boobs away. I don't know shit. If you want to be treated like the rest of the guys, put your boobs away. I don't know shit. Like, is it is this sexy? Put your boobs away. I don't know shit. What are you doing? It's a little creepy, ladies. Listen here, Ethan. I don't know shit. You're probably trying to be a sexy thought. Put your boobs away. I don't know shit. I don't think you're ever going to be a sexy thought. I don't know shit. It's a little creepy, ladies. What are you doing? Put your boobs away. I don't know shit. You're probably trying to be a sexy thought. I don't know shit. I don't think you're going to, but your boobs away. Not into that. There's proof that I'm a fucking selfish, childish baby. No, no, you're working with Ethan Van Skyver on this. Are you guys very collaborative about yeah, it? Yeah, we're really collaborative and we get kind of manic. And whenever I get together with Ethan, Ethan puts in a whole other, other layer of, of art on top of the actual art on the page right. that the reader will never ever see, but that are there. But he, he will add a certain... Uh, he just, um, he's a genius on a, on a very bizarre level. He's a genius on a, he's a genius on a very bizarre level. Very bizarre level. He's a genius on a, he's a genius on a very bizarre level. Very bizarre level. Hello everyone, welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. You're listening to Ethan Van Skyver, 27 year veteran of the comic book industry. World's most charming, elegant, eloquent, and yet humble man. Great big Star Wars fan. Trust a member of the media. Trust a member of the media. Uh, and I am a human sunbeam. The world revolves around the sun, and I am a glorious ray of light. He's a genius on a he's a genius on a very bizarre level. Very bizarre level. Turn around. Look at what you 
Yes, everyone, welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. I am Ethan Van Skyver, glorious human sunbeam, world's most charming, disarming, elegant, eloquent, uh, and yet humble man, great big Star Wars fan, trusted member of the media, trusted member of the media. That's what you guys say, trusted member of the media, right back at me. I listen very closely and I go, they do, they do trust me and they're here. Welcome, welcome, everyone, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Haven't been here for a little while. I think it's been uh, a week, a week of working really hard uh, on doing stuff. Let me see what you guys are saying already. Are you involved in Knife Hand? Are you involved in Knife Hand? Any other uh, JB books? Well, this sounds like uh, an accusation to me. Am I involved in Knife Hand? Uh, I think you're referring to your boy Zach's uh, book called, a uh, proposed comic book called Knife Hand, a solo jawbreaker story that explores Knife Hand, one of his most popular characters. He found a really, really good artist. He's like, Ethan, check this guy out. And I was like, mm, the guy's good. That's good. He's like, well, I'm going to get him to do uh, Knife Hand. I said, okay, cool. Uh, the question is, am I involved? I'm involved in all things jawbreakers uh, from here forward. You know, once jawbreakers three ships, once Jawbreakers 3 is fulfilled, uh, once Expendables is fulfilled, uh, once Forever Stars is fulfilled, once 499, 499 is fulfilled, what else? Uh, from there, moving forward, uh, I am involved in all things Jawbreakers. So I would assume Knife Hand. Yes, yes, indeed. We're going to make it rock, guys. Don't worry about it. It's going to be totally awesome. Uh, we'll fulfill it. We'll print it. We'll do all that stuff. Thank you, Roger H., for a super sticker. Appreciate you very much. Uh, good to see you guys. It's good to uh, uh, good, <laughs> good to actually see the chat. So what are we doing today? We're doing a bunch of stuff. I've got a few stories to tell you. i got a few things to inform you about, uh, to enlighten you about. That's what we do here. Uh, and then also, uh, we are here mostly. Uh, this is the theme of the show. I've been very, very busy. Very busy doing a lot of drawing, trying to get Rec Planet finished, trying to get Rec Planet finished and out of here. I had a really nice moment of inspiration the other day uh, where somebody sent me a picture of John Buscema's uh, Mephisto sitting on a throne. And I had said earlier, I said, John Buscema never meant much to me. I mean, I he was he was good. Uh, you know, I wasn't excited to see him like I was uh, excited to see John Byrne in the 1980s when I was buying comics all the time. Uh, from Marvel. I saw him and I just went, yeah, this is good. This is fine. Uh, but John Byrne, wow, John Byrne is just awesome. Todd McFarlane, wow, Todd McFarlane is just awesome. Anyway, just to uh, prove me wrong, uh, somebody sent me a picture of Mephisto, Satan, sitting in his throne, beautifully rendered by John Buscema. And I felt this, this big. I felt like yeah, that's really good. Too bad that's not what I was seeing all the time. I was seeing his standard monthly uh, stuff. Not very excited about it. But the idea of Mephisto on his throne, I thought to myself, everybody draws supervillains and superheroes sitting on a throne. What could Cyberfrog, could Cyberfrog ever sit on a throne? 
uh, like that, like just a throne of skulls. And I said, that's not really what Cyber Frog would do. Um, but I had to have this scene where he's watching humans uh, that survived do something in a field, uh, you know, and I was just going to have him sitting in the grass. Uh, and then I just thought, no, the, it's just, this is too cool. Uh, Cyber Frog in a lawn chair, you know, watching all this go down grumpily. Like this is my, this is, this is Cyber Frog in a, this is Cyber Frog on a throne. You know, this is that view that I wanted to do where you're shooting up at him and it's just, he's just in a plastic, uh, you know, Walgreens lawn chair uh, surrounded by, surrounded by uh, wasps as though they were mocking him. So, you know, just th that little moment of inspiration. So glad that came to me. It just makes me laugh. Uh, so uh, anyway, yeah, I'm working on Cyber Frog, but also, uh, we got to get the uh, we got to get the Cyber Frog action figures done. I've been talking about it a long time. I'm a lot of talk, a lot of chatter. EVS, uh, where is my frog toy? Where is my frog action figure? Uh, and uh, this has been something that I've been working on for a year, but I've been a little scared. I got to say, a little bit nervous, a little bit nervous about launching frog action figures. They're expensive. They're really hard to do. Uh, you know, now I've got the sculpts done. I've got them finished. They're ready to go. I've got the paint masters ready to go. I've got the paint masters here, uh, but you know they're not completely assembled because they're just very fragile. Uh, so you can see Heather is missing a hand here. She's her leg. Don't worry. Yours will have a leg, uh, a complete leg, uh, both legs, uh, and so it'll be fine. But this is the Heather Swain, uh, as you can see, ready to go. Look at her face. Just beautiful. Um, all right. So that's Heather Swain. And of course, one thing that we want to do is we want to make sure our action figures have swap out heads. Uh, you're going to have this Heather Swain swap out head with a ponytail looking pissed off with scratches on her face. Uh, you're going to have all kinds of weapons will come with Heather Swain, a baseball bat, a nice axe, a swap out knife that can go on her uh, hip. She's going to have this machete. We've, we've got all this stuff ready to go. I've been preparing this now for a year. And uh, just thinking, like, when is a good time? When will be a good time to launch uh, these toys? Uh, I think now is the time. This week, we are fulfilling warts and all. Uh, the trading card binders are arriving at our new warehouse on Wednesday. We are going to ship warts and all to you guys super fast. Uh, get that stuff out there uh, to you, all the people who have been waiting for those orders. And so uh, while we're doing that, let's go ahead and launch the pre-list. I, I got all this stuff figured out. I know what I'm doing. While we're waiting, while we've, uh, we're fulfilling that campaign uh, and we're fulfilling it completely and utterly and totally, uh, you know, we want uh, to have something new on Indiegogo to offer backers, people who want to support CyberFrog. And we got this stuff. We just need to get it underway. We just need to actually uh, get it started so that we can, you know, begin to fulfill this campaign, begin to launch this campaign, I mean, and begin to put these figures into production. This is not easy. This is a scary thing. We're not trying to make like uh, half a dozen action figures. We're not trying to make uh, or you know limited quantities that we can print out ourselves. We're trying to do this to the same scale of quality that Marvel Legends does, if not better. Uh, we're trying to do these to the same scale and quality as Todd McFarlane toys, if not better. Now, some of you were saying, uh, Ethan, you don't know enough about toys. We've got this, you know, Chinese, this Japanese, so on and so forth. Uh, brand of uh, toys. Yeah, I, send me all that. I want to see it. I want to be inspired by it. I want to know what the boundaries are of action figures so that I can push them. But I'm telling you right now, uh, this Cyberfrog Action Figures Wave 1 is a hell of a debut for all caps collectibles. Let's watch the video I just made. <laughs> when the monster you created comes back to bite you in the ass. <laughs> What I say in this disclosure? What? Y'all are stupid, you get shoulder. Cause your plan was to get over. Since the days of Victrola. All the years of straight lies and depriving. Now I'm pushing to take a dive and conniving. We should never hear any cries from the guys. When independence we rise and high steady surviving. Never ever had an artist want to spray us. Cause when they do the work, they know we pay up. And I better see believe the it. getting set to bust. Yes, everyone, sign up now only on Indiegogo. Independent toys, independent comics, that's what it's all about. Uh, and it is a risk. Every single time we try to do this, it's a risk. 
Not sure if it's going to succeed. Not sure if enough people are going to back cyber frog action figures uh, in order to make this profitable, if not even just pay for itself. Uh, but I'm, I, you know, I'm keeping my expectations low, even though I, I know you guys, I know you're supportive. I know that you've always made everything that I do succeed. Everything that I try to do, every time I try to make something, uh, you know, you guys help it to succeed way more uh, past my wildest ambitions, my wildest expectations, uh, and my dreams. They always kind of, you guys are there. You guys support this stuff. And so I reward uh, you and your expectations by making only the finest everything that I do. Everything that I do, I seek to make it the highest quality uh, that is possible. Cyberfrog Action Figures Wave 1, the Cyberfrog Heather Swain Vespas and 1990s six-inch articulated action figure line. Uh, this right here is a sign-up sheet. I want to test people's expectations. I want to, or not expectations, their enthusiasm. I want to test the enthusiasm out there. I want to test and see uh, what the market is going to look like when we launch this campaign. Are we going to be able to uh, meet our quota? And I'm not going to mess around with this. Ordinarily, when I do a comic book, I don't even care anymore. I'm just like $5,000. If I can make $5,000 off of a new Cyberfrog book, I'm going to do it. I don't actually put in what it's going to cost. I have enough money uh, you know, put away so that I can actually make a comic book without even crowdfunding it at this point. These toys are different. I cannot do that. These toys are as if I was starting Cyberfrog Blood Honey all over again. Uh, with no money in the bank, uh, no uh, funding capital, nothing at all. I, I couldn't possibly have made Cyberfrog Blood Honey without your help. These action figures are exactly the same way. I can't make these without you guys. If this campaign fails, we're not making them. You know, I'm going to have to put a very, very big, uh, you know, funding goal that's going to shock some of you. Uh, and then I'm going to promote the living hell out of it. And I'm going to, if we succeed, make the very best the very best action figures that we can. Now, hold on a second here. There are people. No, I spelled drumstick, right? All right, so here's the situation. Sign up now. If you are somebody who is has been looking at the Cyberfrog action figures, as you can see, you get a little glimpse of them here. If you're somebody who's been going, hey, I want that Heather Swain figure. I've seen the Cyberfrog action figure, uh, you know, these images before. Uh, on uh, Twitter, let me see if I can blow this up and make this interesting. I don't know if I can. All right, this is uh, this is the uh, Cyberfrog action figure. If you've seen this, you've read the comics, you're collecting the comics, and you want a Cyberfrog action figure. I can tell you now, uh, they uh, we were going to make them fifty dollars. We settled on forty five dollars, and then I went, I can't. Let's make it forty dollars. Uh, Cyberfrog Heather nineteen ninety Cyberfrog are going to be forty dollars, which I think is pretty competitive. I think, I hope so. Uh, Cyberfrog, uh, these are going to be uh, $40 each on the uh, on the actual campaign. If you're somebody who is thinking, yeah, when they, uh, when they launch, I'm going to support this campaign, sign up here. Sign up here. Leave me your email address. Let me know that you are a part of this, that you want to support this, uh, that you're looking forward to these action figures. Leave me your email address and join the email address so that we can let you know all updates about this campaign, when it launches, what we're going to do with it. When you do, when you sign up uh, for this email notifications list, if you back the campaign, we're going to have your name, we'll have your uh, email, uh, you are going to get this bonus set of accessories. Uh, you are going to get a bucket of chicken and you are going to get a Cyberfrog chicken fist. As you can see, this is just a swappable fist. It's got a chicken leg in it. Uh, you're going to get these two accessories exclusive with your Cyberfrog, uh, with your purchase of Cyberfrog. Uh, here you've got, uh, we'll also have the Vespas. We're going to price the Vespas at $75. I think we can do it for that. I'm trying to keep the prices as low as I can uh, and still be able to raise enough money to be able to produce these toys. Uh, and uh, purchase the minimum order quantity of these toys. Uh, sign up early, receive exclusive chicken fist with pre-order by signing up. You'll also receive the latest updates, news and from the campaign, all that stuff. I'll keep in touch with you guys. Look at his frogness, beautifully painted, amazing accessories, alternate hands and heads. You've got a nice disturbingly and awesomely articulated Vespis as well. 
it's scary. This is scary. This is all stuff that like, you know, it's like I, I get excited about it. I'm excited to do these things, uh, but also terrified uh, at the same time. Uh, all right. Let me see your questions here uh, in the chat. <laughs> Chicken fist. Yes. Uh, let me see here. Do not sign up. Do not sign up, chat. You'll get the diabetes. You will not. There is no, <laughs> there is no insulin anything about this. Uh, unless you just think these action figures look pretty sweet, which they do. Uh, all right, let me see now. Hungry now. Thank you, Ethan. Drumstick Cyberfrog. Now is a good time to enjoy some fried chicken. Uh, let me see. Will Cyberfrog's feet have an ankle rocker? Now, people have asked me about that. At this moment, he doesn't. Uh, the campaign will list the articulation that he currently has. However, should we reach the funding goal and beyond? Okay, if we're actually going to surpass uh you know our minimum expectations for this in order to be able to to make these toys we'll monkey with this toy all you want uh, i started looking at kickstarter campaigns for action figures first of all there are almost no indiegogo action figures we're gonna break that balloon we're gonna bust that we're gonna bust that cherry wide open <laughs> indiegogo is gonna have a big fat uh, Cyber Frog action figure campaign. It's first big action figure campaign because they've they've launched like two or three and they've haven't really uh, haven't really set the world on fire yet. We are going to make Indiegogo into an enormous crowdfunding platform for action figures just with this one campaign, and we're going to do many, many more. Kickstarter is different. I looked at Kickstarter, researched it. Daddy Mac, Todd McFarlane, God bless him has the number one, uh, you know, comic book and, in, and action figure related campaign ever. He put a comic book in his action figure campaign. People have asked me if I'm going to do that. The answer is yes. Uh, we're going to have to do a cyber fraud comic book in the, uh, in the, uh, individual packages. We have to, we have to produce a cyber frog book of some sort that'll go in there so that kids can read about cyber frog and know where he came from. Uh, but Todd McFarlane raised $3.4 million from something like 28,000 backers. Todd McFarlane has an enormous audience. Todd McFarlane has an enormous fan base. Todd McFarlane is the king. He is a legend. But right after that, there was a pretty steep drop-off. We've got these guys named the Four Horsemen uh, who make exquisite medieval Dungeons & Dragons style fantasy action figures. Uh, they they sell to about 1,600 to 1,800 people, uh, and still they raise close to a million dollars. Uh, and then underneath that, somebody did a fucking Ruth Bader Ginsburg action figure that had 9,000 backers. Folks, we cannot allow that to happen. We cannot allow Cyberfrog to be beaten by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Look at her. How do I get more backers than Ruth Bader Ginsburg? We need to be ruthless with cyber fraud. We need to be ruthless with this campaign, uh, just like the United States of America has been ruthless uh, for the past year or so. We got, we've got to make this happen. I think that we can. Can we beat the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Kickstarter action figure? I mean, we got to try. We got to try, guys. We got to try. We got to go big or go home. Uh, as you can see, we've got the uh, Vespas action figure here. Beautiful, uh, articulated, all of these joints. Uh, our, I'm hoping this doesn't break. This is the paint master. Uh, yeah, we've got the uh, joints that are all articulated here. The wings will be articulated. The head. This is my favorite bit of articulation. Uh, the abdomen is articulated. This is so sharp right now. This is like hard plastic. This will put your eye out. I guess we're going to have to make this soft so the kids can play with it a little bit. But I want to keep it sharp like this. Get stung. Uh, yeah, so we've got to do it, guys. We've got to actually beat Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Finally, you know, it's like she's been asking for it her whole career, I think. She she was asking for uh, uh, the frog to pummel her action figure into the ground. Uh, let me see. Does Andrea make good fried chicken? Andrea makes the best fried chicken. She really does. She makes great fried chicken. Uh, Cyberfrog 4, a fistful of chicken. Ab Merlock says, how long do we have to sign up? Uh, I'm going to leave the sign up up for one month. You have one month to sign up for this campaign and to join this campaign. I think that's plenty of time. It doesn't cost anything. All you have to do is put your email in there, your email address, uh, and uh, you will be signed up for the uh, for the email notifications list for one month. And after that, it's going to come down because it's no longer going to be useful because 
after one month, maybe even on the 4th of July, Independence Day. I love Independence Day for this purpose. Uh, maybe even on Independence Day, we're going to launch our action figures. Uh, and those who uh, signed up early, uh, good news. You're going to, you know, uh, you're going to get a bucket of chicken. Here it is. You're going to get a bucket of chicken and you are going to receive a chicken fist. <laughs> Here is the chicken fist that you will be receiving. Uh, all right. So let me see. Signed up. Need them. Oh, thank you very much, Maticus uh, Finch. I appreciate you very much for doing that. Uh, Brad Frederick says, is there going to be an executive tier? I have to think about it. I think there's going to be a one of everything tier. Uh, could there be an executive tier with a rare variant? That is a possibility. It is a possibility that we go ahead and we make Heather Swain uh, with a red shirt or a white shirt <clears throat> or an all caps comics shirt. And we do that as a one-off variant for executive backers. How do we raise a little bit more money to be able to make this happen? We'll need to have an executive tier. Yes, yes. I'm going to say yes right now. There will be an executive tier. We'll find something that's neat. We'll find something neato uh, for people who are uh, going to support this campaign um, big time. Jeff Stark says, I want them all, Pie Man. Oh, please buy them all. Now, I, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I was worried about this. I was like, could I, should I launch them one at a time? Should I stick my toe in? No, F it. I'm going to launch them all. I'm going to launch them all at once. You know, all or nothing. If this doesn't work, it just doesn't work. It wasn't meant to be. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just launch all of them. Uh, let's see. Ruth sucked, says Eternal Shadows. That is true. Yeah, RBG is going down. We got to make that happen. That is going to be a major spite stretch goal uh, is to beat the Ruth Bader Ginsburg, absurd Ruth Bader Ginsburg action figure. Now, uh, let me see here. Brian Polito is making a Hellwitch figure. I hope a lot of people uh, make action figures, independent action figures. As long as they're quality, I want to see that happen. Let me see. Cyberfrog Ashcan book inside the action figure box. I'm going to look very closely because I bought Todd McFarlane's spawn. And I, I don't know if I can do what he did. He sold to 28,000 people uh, or something like that. It was a lot. It was nearly 30,000 backers on his campaign. That is uh, the way this works is that, you know, if you can if you can say I'm going to make 30,000 of these action figures, you're going to get a very low price or a lower price. Uh, I want to make 10,000. Uh, I want to make 10,000 Cyber Frogs, 10,000 Heathers, 10,000 Vespas. Uh, in order to do that, I need to sell 2,500 of them. 2,500 will pay for the whole run. And then I'll have 7,500 that I can distribute wherever else. I can sell them on eBay. But I need to sell 2,500 of each in order for this to break even. Uh, so that's that's the whole thing. Now, Todd McFarlane's out there selling 28,000. He can make more exquisite product. Boy, if I could sell, uh, if if I could sell more than twenty five hundred, I could do better things. So that's that's what we're looking at right now. Let's keep our expectations low. Can I sell twenty five hundred of these? I don't know. I'm not sure. I sold twenty five hundred um, uh, honeycomb boxes. I sold. Uh, uh, you know, I've got twelve thousand backers on Rec Planet. It's possible. It's possible that I could do it. I'm going to keep our expectations low and just hope that we're able to make the stuff. But if uh, our expectations are blown out by reality, that I mean, they, you know, we actually do well. Yeah, I'm going to do all kinds of crazy cool stuff, all kinds of extra stuff. Uh, let me see. Cyberfrog as Ruth Bader Ginsburg, that would make a great variant. Uh, that really would. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, yo, uh, EBS, you listen to Tech Nine. That's awesome. I went to see him in North Carolina. Yeah, you'd be surprised at my musical taste. I am a boomer, but I, I pay attention to pop music of all kinds. Uh, let me see. You have to approve abortion, EBS. What do you mean? Why? For Ruth Bader Ginsburg? No, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, let me see. Awesome figures, EBS. Uh, just sell Cyberfrog glass eyes for when they get poked out. That's a good idea, too. Then we could keep the, uh, then we could keep the Vespus Stinger nice and hard and, and sharp uh, as, uh, as it is right now. It's more fun this way. Uh, Zedek says, closer and closer to Santa Claus every day. <laughs> I know. Oh, my gosh, you guys. I really love this. I absolutely love doing this. Uh, Hot Toys Figures, says Riddick. Uh, Riddick? Possibly. 
let's do this one step at a time. You guys remember step one was, or the PVCs, which we were amazingly successful with. These PVCs are awesome. And the boxes that they came in are great. Uh, the Salamandroid PVCs, which you guys uh, should start receiving this week, uh, are terrific. I think we've mailed out 400 of those already, something like that. So people are going to be getting their Salamandroid toys probably tomorrow. Uh, and then we're going to do a whole bunch of CyberFrog PVCs as well. So one step at a time, I can see that eventually, uh, should this succeed, uh, I want to do all kinds of cool stuff like that. Uh, let me see. How will they be boxed? Like Marvel Legends series? All right, so uh, it is $1 more expensive per figure um, to put them in paper boxes. You see the Green Lantern toys there, right there? That's $1 cheaper to do that. So we start out going, they're going to be packaged like this. They're going to be packaged like on uh, plastic, you know, cards like that. Uh, and if we do better, I would much prefer them to be in boxes. Uh, so we're just, again, we keep our expectations low. Uh, we start with like a really good quality product, and then we try to enhance that good quality product as we go, uh, depending on how well it does. Uh, yes. Uh, what's the goal for each figure, Pie Man? Uh, I don't know what the goal is. I uh, twenty five hundred action figures would be the goal. Now, if we if we sell two thousand, I'll probably I'll go into my pocket and I'll still make them because I think I can like sell the remainder and then still make my money back. Uh, but yeah, the goal would be we want to make we want to sell 2,500 of these action figures. Now you could say, well, what's 2,500 times 40, and then you uh, then you get like uh, whatever that is. What is that? Is that 100,000 or 200,000? I'm not sure. But in any case, with Indiegogo, it gets confusing because uh, your shipping charge gets thrown into that. So you know, shipping obviously isn't being spent to make the toys. So I would just rather say the quantity that we're trying to sell. Uh, is uh, is what we're looking for. And the quantity is 2,500 each. Uh, Jose M says, I'm currently waiting for McFarlane Toys Black Suit Superman, Steppenwolf and Dark Side figures from Zack Snyder's Justice League. Uh, I, I got to say, I saw uh, Todd's DC Toys uh, today at uh, Walmart. I saw some Batman stuff and he's just great. Uh, he really is great. I, I have to do better than him. <laughs> <laughs> he's terrific. I got to beat him. My toys have to be better than his and they will be with your support, with your help. Uh, they definitely will be. Uh, all right. Tw all right. So here's what, here's what we're hearing. Um, somebody did some math for me. 2,500 times 40 is a hundred thousand. Okay. So basically what we want to do in order to make, you know, uh, the three action figures is we want to make $300,000 in action figure uh, money, not, not including shipping. Uh, but again, I'm going to, I'll probably set the uh, goal. And then the Vespas is 75 or $75. We want to make uh, 10,000 of those as well. We want to sell 2,500 of them. Uh, I'll probably set the goal uh, at something like $200,000. Uh, but what I'll be looking at is I'll be looking at how many of each figure gets made. Now, if we say, uh, oh, uh, here's Heather Swain, she only sold 50 figures, then we probably won't make Heather Swain. <laughs> we'll be able to back off of one of them and refund people or something. I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm excited about this. I, I don't think, I think we're going to do okay. I'll keep my expectations low, but I think we're going to, uh, we're going to do all right. Uh, make paint variants, like white variants for people to paint. Well, we did that with the PVCs. We're going to be launching. I haven't even shown you guys this stuff yet. I haven't even shown you some of the stuff that we've done. We've made uh, paintable uh, white versions of the PVCs, the Salamandroid and the Cyberfrog, and a matching white Blood Honey, uh, Ultimate Blood Honey edition, which contains 1998 and Blood Honey, re-lettered, uh, you know, remixed, remastered, one book with a spine, and it's uh, it's got, uh, let me see, how, how can I show this to you guys? I can illustrate all these concepts pretty simply with uh, images, not words, uh, because I'm a dummy. Let me see. Open in a new tab. Close this. Those people who uh, are my patrons on Patreon already saw this. Uh, I'll show this to you guys for the first time. If you are, if uh, you know, on my Patreon, uh, you're already fully aware of this. This is. Uh, let me see. Blow this up a little. Uh, 
Uh, this is the cover uh, sculpt to Ultimate Blood Honey, Ultimate Cyberfrog Blood Honey. So if you ordered the Wrecked Planet uh, Honeycomb box, there's something called Ultimate Cyberfrog Blood Honey in there. It's gold. This entire book is, col is gold. Uh, but the image of Cyberfrog is sculpted into the cover. It's coming out of the cover. It's in 3D. There's no black lines on this. It's just a pure gold cover and Cyberfrog, Ultimate Cyberfrog Blood Honey sculpted into the cover. Uh, and so uh, you're going to be getting these. There are 2,500 Ultimate Cyberfrog Blood Honeys that are in gold uh, that are going to come with the honeycomb boxes. But we also did a silver edition and we did a white edition. And the white edition, it's going to be just like this, except it's white, uh, will uh, come with the paintable Cyberfrog and Salamandroid PVCs. We're going to make those available pretty soon. And then the silver uh, edition will come with silver Cyberfrog and Salamandroid variant PVCs. Uh, as well. But this is just going to be a beautiful book. 80 pages, all killer, no filler. Uh, it's got Cyberfrog Blood Honey re-lettered uh, and remastered. And it's got um, Cyberfrog uh, 1998, The Diary of Heather Swain, also uh, re-lettered, remastered, included in this book, uh, just 80 pages. Uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be really, really good. If you had any problems with Cyberfrog Blood Honey, uh, before we just uh, we just fixed them with this book, so I think you're going to be excited. Um, <laughs> thank you, all these. Oh, thank you, everyone who's signing up. Yeah, it's called embossing uh, and uh, debossing is when it sinks into the cover. Uh, I've tried to I try to use the word embossing. Not a lot of people know what that is, and it's hard to really describe. But uh, Hallmark used to use among use it on greeting cards all the time. When you were a kid, you'd get greeting cards, and the image would be kind of puffy on the. That's what uh, that's what we're doing here. Yeah, it's like the Wildcats number one variant. We're you know listen. <laughs> I said skate man. Can I do you know what at this point I really should do the skate man cover. Uh, you know I should I should actually redraw the skate man cover with Cyberfrog characters. I just feel like I should. OC Steve says Sal Mug is an add on for the action figure campaign. I would really like a long sleeve Cyberfrog. Salamandroid t-shirts too, Uncle Lee. Good thoughts. Yeah, we're making the Salamandroid mug, but I haven't really formally announced it yet. It's being sculpted now. I, I think I've shown a few uh, images of the drawings of it, and it, it looks so cool. It was Andrea's idea. Andrea wanted the mug. Uh, Projects Done Poorly says, Uncle E, too many gay ops going on these days. Well, it's Pride Month. What do you expect? Oh, uh, best way to counter the threat is to make things. Congrats on making good stuff. Now time to replace the fandom menace uh, with the Jack show. Hmm. Well, I mean, you know, okay. This is all uh, very important on the internet. In real life, though, what's important is actually making good stuff uh, and uh, criticizing, uh, doing a good job of criticizing the social justice warriors and what they are making out there. Yeah. Terrible, terrible. Uh, Ethan embossed his gut. <laughs> yes, I'd like to deboss it. Uh, Miss Megan XOXOXO. Hail EVS. Uh, why don't you play piano anymore? It puts my two year old uh, to sleep. You have such a beautiful voice. Thanks. Uh, and then a thumbs up. I love your channel. Thank you very much. I do, I played piano um, maybe a week or two ago on a video. I just don't do it very much. I'm so busy. Uh, I'm so very, very busy right now. <laughs> I got so much to do. We've got to put Cyberfrog out. we got to get these action figures to you guys. Uh, and we have to make them beautiful. Look at this. So you've got Cyberfrog, and we're going to have this little accessory. You can get a Cyberfrog hand holding a severed Vespa's head. So you could reenact the cover to uh, 1998, The Diary of Heather Swain. Uh, we've got Cyberfrog with a stinger. Look at this bloody version of his head. Your kids are going to love that. Uh, and then we've got Cyberfrog showing his teethers. Look at his teeth. He's like, e <laughs> it's beautiful. Look at his little two first. Hold on. Let me put his head on with the two first. All right, Cyberfrog. There we go, buddy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> You're going to have all kinds of cool. Oh, here's like one of his hands. I haven't attached his forearms because I just, I don't dare, you know. But look at this. Look at this cool hand. Uh, that can grip things. Yeah, you can grip things. You can grab them. The, they let you, you know, when you're a cybernetic frog from Perdani. Uh, all right. Uh, let me see. Bob's Away says, did you do that Buck Sexton interview? 
Yes, I did. And uh, I guess it played on Friday. I didn't hear it, uh, but Andrea's uncle did. <laughs> he was driving a truck. He said, your husband was on the Buck Sexton show. Uh, I don't know where you can see that or where you can hear it, uh, but I did. I did a video interview and I did a radio interview. <laughs> it, was, it was okay. I'm somebody who needs to talk for more than nine minutes. Uh, you know, when I'm when I'm trying to sum up in nine minutes, I'm not that great, but it was all right. You know, I had a good time. Uh, let me see. Uh, Jose M says, hey, Uncle E, you know what's going on with crypto fashion? Ordered a couple of cool caps from your store there and haven't heard anything from them. Well, red alert, Ian, uh, you know, send people their their stuff Ian uh, over crypto fashion. He's, he's basically a one dude operation. He's normally very, very good, but sometimes he can get behind. So, uh, Jose, I would just, uh, you know, send a message to him on Twitter. Hey, Ian, send me my uh, <laughs> send me my caps. Yeah, we got a bunch of new stuff on crypto fashion. People are starting to get their human sunbeam T-shirts. That's the most annoying T-shirt I've ever seen, but I want one. Uh, and uh, Choke Slammy Unicorn t-shirts are really popular as well. Uh, DJ Sickbreak says, EVS, what about the 90s Cyberfrog toy? Uh, that's a good question. You mean the one the Playmates made? So uh, I, I have considered taking that sculpt, which is broken. I have, a, I have you know, a sculpt of it, but it's, you know, it needs to be repaired. And sending it in and somehow getting it digitally copied uh, and then producing what would have been. Uh, a playmates style cyber frog action figure what would it have looked like and we could actually put it on playmates style packaging as well you know we could do the whole thing we could uh we could fix history uh yeah we'll see how this goes i'm i'm interested in doing lots of stuff i'm interested in uh in making a lot of toys a lot of products a lot of comics uh you know yeah trevor nickel says uh will the white ultimate blood honey be black and white interiors no it isn't it's it's regular interiors i have not released a black and white one yet but this is true it would keep with the unpainted motif of the figures it comes with would love that so much trevor yeah i'll do that eventually you know i will do something like that eventually uh <laughs> radio interview <laughs> yes buck sexton is taking over the rush limbaugh show uh, he is a conservative uh, kind of sean hannity fellow on the radio, on AM radio, and uh, wanted to talk to me about all Caps Comics and succeeding in spite of cancel culture, which is one of my favorite things to talk about. So I uh, was happy to do that. Um, but it, it was, you know, it was pre recorded and then played on AM radio. So I don't know uh, where that could be found. Somebody will find it, I'm sure. Uh, Drew with Comics Elite says, Got my Rainbow the Brood shirts and I'm rocking them on our Comics Elite YouTube channel. Lots of compliments. Hey, thank you so much, Drew. Appreciate it. Uh, and Ron Guerra says, put Heather in a bikini and roller skates like Skate Man. Now, there you go. That's how to do the cover is actually don't do Cyber Frog, but do it uh, as uh, put Heather Swain uh, in uh, roller skates like Roller Girl from Boogie Nights, uh, kicking some uh, Vespas in the face. Uh, so why are we here? We got a lot more people in here now. Uh, 1,044 people watching. Thanks for joining. Today is the day that we're launching uh, the email sign up list for the Cyberfrog action figures wave one. Here's the video. <laughs> when the monster you created comes back to bite you in the ass. <laughs> what I say in this disclosure, y'all are stupid to get shoulder. Cause your plan was to get over. Since the days of Victrola, all the years of straight lies and depriving. Now we're pushing to take a dive and conniving. We should never hear any cries when the guys when independence we rise and high steady surviving. Never ever had an artist wanna spray us. Cause when they do the work, they know we pay up. And I see the labels getting sent to bust. Cause the people yeah, that's right. Uh, here it is. This is uh, this is the opening salvo uh, for the cyber frog action figures and more importantly all caps collectibles action figures in general because if this succeeds uh, we will be doing more we will be making jawbreakers action figures on positive we'll make star blades uh, we're going to be doing a lot more i want to do the 18 inch salamandroid action figure which is a dream of mine to produce but we have to get there slowly we have to take it one step at a time this is step one. If you look in the description below this video, uh, you will see that there is a link where you can find this page here and you can sign up. Give me your email address. Agree to the terms of use. Don't be so hostile. Just agree to the terms of use. 
and read and understand the privacy policy or lie and say that you did by clicking this box. You can sign up for the Indiegogo newsletter if you want to. It's not really that necessary. Uh, but if you can, if you want to uh, sign up like this, and then I think you're going to get an email and it's going to say, are you sure you want to hear from this dickhead? And you're going to say, yes, I do want to hear from Ethan. I like hearing from Ethan about his projects. And then you're going to be all signed up. We're going to have your address, your email address, I mean, uh, so that we can send you notifications so that we can say we're almost ready. We're almost ready uh, to launch the Cyberfrog Vespus and Heather Swain action figure wave one line. And then when you uh, order them, you're going to get in your package, you're going to get this little bonus thing. I'm going to make a little two pack compartment here of a chicken fist and a bucket of chicken. Your gift your, your gift, your free bonus gift for signing up early and supporting the campaign. Uh, you know, people who sign up early for these campaigns are, uh, what can I say? They're my favorite people in the world. They are super um, fans, super fans. You guys, uh, you the supporters who actually, uh, you know, uh, jump on these, uh, you know, campaigns on the first day mean everything to us. You know, that this kind of enthusiasm is encouraging and it makes us want to do more and do better. So uh, those people who sign up early, meaning this month, you have 30 days to do this. Tell all your friends, uh, let everyone know on social media, spread it around, give people this link. Don't let people cheat themselves out of the chicken fist and the chicken bucket. They need to know about this. Sign up early. You're going to get this uh, when you back uh, the cyber frog, the cyber frog uh, action figure campaign. And you're going to want to, you're going to want a Vespus. I think we should make like a two pack of Vespus so that you could actually build an army of these uh, bastards. You want like, I'm mean, just a whole swarm of them. Can you imagine? What if you had like 10 Vespus uh, and then one cyber frog figure it would look crazy. It'd be scary as hell. Uh, so you'll, you know, get Vespus, get Heather, get 90 cyber frog, get modern cyber frog. Uh, and, uh, I, I thank you. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, constantly in awe of, uh, what you guys have allowed all caps comics and all caps, uh, collectibles, which is what we're going to call this kind of imprint company, all caps collectibles, uh, what you've allowed us to do every day. Uh, we're grateful. Uh, we are grateful. We could not do this without you. It's always a risk. It's always a little bit scary. Uh, but we always, uh, know. Uh, that our supporters are going to support us. And for that, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, help us make this a reality. And I'm telling you something. People are, uh, the SJWs, not that this matters anymore, but they don't like this. I don't, I, you know, I, I I would think they'd be happy for me and supportive of making Cyberfrog action figures, but they don't seem to be. You know, they, they're just kind of like uh, not happy about it. Why? Why wouldn't you be happy about us an opportunity to get a cyber frog action figure? I don't know. I mean, even if you don't want one for yourself, surely you would be happy that other people who do want a cyber frog action figure, that other people who do want a Heather Swain in a chicken fry shirt action figure holding a, a hatchet bloody with the guts of a Vespus that she has slain. Hopefully, I mean, you would think that people who, uh, even if you didn't want to purchase a large Vespus action figure. You'd still be happy for those who did and who were excited about it. But no, SJWs for some reason, not excited, not happy for me. I'll never understand that. I mean, if they were making millions of dollars by creating action figures of their popular independent franchise, uh, in spite of the fact that they'd been canceled by uh, political partisans who opposed them out of spite, I'd be happy for them but they can't be happy for me. It's weird. Uh, so anyway, uh, go, <laughs> go to the link uh, and sign up for the Cyberfrog Action Figures Wave 1. It doesn't cost anything. It's just, hey, I'm interested in hearing about it. Uh, and when you do back the campaign, which is going to launch July, let me say the 4th of July. I'm going to actually commit to that. We're going to launch on the 4th of July, Independence Day here in the United States of America. It just seems poetic to me. It seems poetic that we're doing this independently uh, and we launch on Independence Day. And people are always saying to me, you're, you're making, to Ethan's making toys? Through what company? What company would do something with Ethan? None of them would. Uh, I'm doing it myself. That is why. Uh, there is no uh, toy company out there uh, that would not be vulnerable uh, to SJW heckling harassment threats. There's none. That's why we have to do this ourselves. 
And when I do it, I know that John Malin's going to do it. Uh, JB says, uh, no Sal action figure. No, JB, this is the whole thing. I've got the sculpt already lined up. I, I want to make a Salamandroid action figure that is to scale with Cyberfrog. Here is Cyberfrog with his arms attached. This is the 90s version of Cyberfrog with his Reservoir Frog uh, guns uh, on him. He's got his nice toaster oven knee pads. Uh, and he is yellow with black spots uh, on his chest. Uh, I want to make a Salamandroid that is to scale with Cyberfrog, meaning uh, that he is going to be about 18 inches tall and he'll be able to stand up. He'll be able to hunch over like a Komodo dragon. His tail will be multi-articulated instead of just a bendy wire. Uh, I want his eyes to light up. I want his jaws to open. I, I want everything about him to be the perfect Salamandroid action figure. Uh, in order to do that, I've got to be successful with this run. Salamandroid and Lily will be Wave 2 and possibly Rumblebee. That's the future, though, and I don't want to think about it too hard because I'll, I'll have my heart broken if this doesn't work. Uh, so uh, <laughs> one and I like the butter T-shirt. Well, get on it. You know, get on it over there, crypto fashion. We want an I lick the butter t shirt. Uh, Tommy says uh, they talked about Cyberfrog figures on the Toy Lines podcast this morning. Yeah, they're very excited about it. I will be going on the Toy Lines uh, podcast for an interview uh, about this because this is the thing, guys. If I can do this, if I can pull this off, uh, SJWs are, uh, well, they're, I don't think they're going to be happy no matter what I do, but it's going to be more possible for everyone else. We got to blaze a trail. We got to find out what it's possible to do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the chance. If we can make this work, Salamandroid's right around the corner. Gigantic 18 inch Salamandroid, you know, 18 inch Salamandroid. Awesome. Just Awesome. Uh, let me see. Uh, EVS should call his toy company Fat Bro. It's no, it's all caps collectible uh, collectibles. I don't want to call my company Fat Bro. I don't want people to be thinking about how fat I am when they're buying my toys and playing with them. That doesn't seem like a good plan. Uh, Josiah Haynes says, "What do you think the chances are that DC would ever let you do a crossover with <laughs> Cyber Frog and Cyborg?" I would love to do that. I would love to do uh, Ray Fisher as Cyborg, a crossover with Cyberfrog. That would be fun. What do I think the chances are? Uh, 100%. I think they're 100%. Uh, Cumberbatch Pepperpot says, does Sal have a favorite food? We haven't seen yet, have we? We haven't seen what Sal likes to eat. You will. You know, Don't worry about it. We will get to this. Sal of is, uh, at this point, he's still very mysterious. You guys... Uh, in the in the first uh, book, you get a sense of who Salamandroid is and what he's like, but Salamandroid's uh, death sting is going to answer a lot of questions, uh, and uh, you'll see from there. What does he like to eat? Does he like to eat children? No, of course not. He is a good he's a good boy. Sal is good boy. Um, let me see. Uh, EVS, if USA do enter into a conflict with China. Have you looked for alternative companies for creating your toys? I guess I'd have to, but let's not think about that. Let's not, let's not, <laughs> let's not dwell on possibilities that could be catastrophic. Uh, yes, of course I would. And, you know, if I could find somebody uh, in the United States or Canada uh, who could make toys, that would be great. That could make toys of this quality for this kind of, uh, uh, you know, price, a cost. Uh, I would certainly use them. Um, let me see. Don't pull a Zach and kill half of your most popular characters. My characters are always being threatened. They're always, uh, you know, hanging by a thread. Always. So that's what drama is all about. Hey, speaking of drama, I want to uh, talk about a couple of things here. First of all, excuse me. Wait, let me let me see if I can belch. No, I can't. Damn it. Uh, Clint Stoker. Uh, the great Clint Stoker has launched his third issue of Downcast, his third Downcast book. Uh, Downcast is great. I purchased uh, two of them, uh, the first two, uh, and also the original art for issue number two, I think I own, which is great. Uh, but uh, Downcast 3 just launched. I want to tell people about it uh, and, uh, you know, hope that you'll back it. Now, wait one second. I screwed up and you know what I messed up about. I like Clint Stoker. He's somebody who has... 
uh, abided by the Comicscape principles, has not complained, does not start drama. He's got a YouTube channel where he talks about what's going on in, in comics. He talks about SJW issues. He talks about, um, you know, where, uh, you know, social justice and radicalism has hurt comics. Uh, he's also talked about, uh, you know, things within Comicscape uh, that matter. Uh, and he's done this every single day and he's seen more and more success uh, with his comics because they're good. Watch this. I see what no one else can. One taste of that cursed stone sent me to the bottom of the ocean. For years I wandered, searching but not seeing. Finally, when I opened my eyes, I saw them for what they are. Not benevolent, not omnipotent, and not gods. Do you smell that? It's here. If you could see what I see, you would understand why I hunt them. Yes, back downcast submerged right now on Indiegogo. Downcast three by Clint Stoker. It's like uh, the books have been great. Uh, I want to see that Clint continues to succeed. Uh, and uh, I have no doubt that he will. Look at this great, consistent artwork uh, and uh, great characters, a great plot, great idea uh, for Downcast. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm going to get Clint on here and talk to him at some point. Just say, hey, Clint, how are you? Can you tell me your formula for success? He's got 333 backers right now, uh, and he deserves many, many, many more. Uh, and I really hope he gets them. Uh, Trent Canuga's Creed, uh, I want to tell you, is finished. It's off to the printer. We sent Creed to the printer now. Uh, I'm going to keep this campaign open for another month or so, I guess. And then we're going to have to close it down because, you know, not unlike Starblades, at some point, you know, I cut off the, I say, this is how many books we're printing. Uh, and then once I let people know it's coming, we're fulfilling it. Then a lot of people rush in there uh, and uh, push that print run all the way to the very, very edge until we just don't have a lot of spare copies. That's what happened with Starblades. It's probably going to happen with Creed uh, Reimaginary 1 and 2 as well. So I'm going to leave this open for one more month while the book is being printed uh, with beautiful, shiny foil logos. Yeah, Trent really liked the way Starblades looked and kind of said, how can I get the same kind of embossed logo look for my books? Uh, we got that for him. That's no problem. You know, whatever, uh, whatever our guys want, whatever our creative people want, we try to uh, make that possible. So, uh, you know, you don't, don't worry about it. We got it. Um, so Trent Canuga's Creed Reimaginary 1 and 2 still available. You can get both issues with variants. Uh, you can still get Cyberfrog versus Creed. This is Unforgettable Tales number four. Uh, you can get it with my cover or Trent's cover. Uh, and uh, here's another variant cover that we did together. What is this here? Trent, Trent is doing sketches. Oh, here's the uh, Unforgettable Tales number four cover. This is going to be foil uh, is it going to be embossed? It's, I think it's just going to be like, I don't know, sculpted or something like that. I'll have to look at that. I'll have to see what we're going to do. Uh, here's Trent's uh, version of the cover. We both basically redrew our original covers from the nineties. Everybody's getting shiny stickers. Everybody's going to get a trading card. Uh, this is what the work looks like. It's appropriate for kids, but it's also for adults. Uh, it is uh, a lot of fun. It's hilarious. It's funny. Trent Kanuga is just an absolute riot. And he's been doing this for so long. This is the character that made him uh, popular. You know, this is the character that launched his career. We've got a Hall of Heroes jam cover here. Matt Martin drew Snowman. I drew Cyberfrog. And, he, and Trent drew Creed. Uh, so we've got that cover available if you want to back that. Cyberfrog collectibles uh, are here on this uh, campaign. Uh, thanks, everyone, for making this another six-figure, enormous blockbuster success. First book out of the gate for Trent Canuga uh, on crowdfunding, and he does this well. This is a good showing. Uh, Rainbow the Brute, 
uh, what are we doing? Um, we're doing a troll doll of Rainbow the Brew with troll hair uh, that people who back the executive briefcase are going to get, as well as four severed unicorn uh, pencil topper heads that smell like strawberries. Those are actually in production right now. I'm going to have those pretty soon. Uh, Rainbow the Brute still available. Make sure that you back it uh, ASAP. And Snowman, a cold day in hell. Matt Martin just uh, showed me two more pages that were just exquisite, just amazing. Uh, Stefani Renee is coloring the interiors of this book, and they are to die for. He is slaving over these pages. Matt Martin's pretty damn close to six figures himself. We think he's going to get there, and when he does, all of his comics are going to be foil covers. Everything's going to be shiny. I don't want to put out books that aren't shiny in some way. Shiny is all caps comics. It's our brand. Everything needs to shine out there. And that's what we're doing. Um, all right, let me see the chat. And then we're going to talk a little bit about John Delarose. What do you think of that? We haven't done that for a while. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Uh, go back and read Missed Super Chats, Mr. Van Road Rage. Well, I think I will. It sounds like a good idea. Let me keep up with you guys. The last thing I want to do is not read your super chats when you're sending me free money to just say hi to me and call me fat. Uh, mostly call me gay. Uh, Christopher Gorey says, uh, good, sir. I've enjoyed all of your previous skate man issues and I'm excited to learn more about Salamandroid in future skate man volumes. No, I didn't do skate man. That was Neil Adams. Uh, that was a filthy, dirty lie concocted by the uh, sinister Dan Shaheen. Uh, never have I worked on skate man. And I don't think my work bears any res any resemblance to Skate Man. Uh, Christopher Gorey says, "Sir, Anna, that Star Wars girl recently reve revealed recently revealed that Kelsey Shannon is in fact Bigfoot. Your thoughts? I feel like I already knew it. I feel like I knew that all along. Uh, let me see. Does Sal have a favorite food? Well, we'll find out about that. Uh, Darth Vader Ginsburg says, "EVS, if you need that cyber frog cast fixed, a dude named wait, hold on." If you need that cyber frog cast fixed, a dude named Vince Vell can do it. Oh, the Playmates toy. He has a channel on YouTube. Just search for Vince Vell Customs. All right, I will. Uh, Keen Scene says accompanying books should contain background scenes, allowing stop action shorts with articulated figures. Great social media fodder for promotion. That's interesting. You know, what if we did instead of like, uh, what if we did um, instead of a pinup section? Uh, in the comic book for the action figures. We, you know, the book has a short story, maybe a 10 page news story. And then the rest of the book is, opens up into double page spread scenes, like background scenes, backdrops uh, that you could photograph your, uh, your figures against. Interesting. Uh, H is for heretic says Sal BAF. BAF, what does BAF stand for? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say yes. Uh, Daniel Craig says, is it too late for us to comment on the articulation? No, 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 it isn't. We'll do our best. You know, uh, right now it is the way it is, but, uh, if we do better, if we, if we, I don't know, if we overfund, uh, we'll be able to change and add to and improve the articulation. And I'll, I'll be listening to people's ideas for that. Uh, let me see any chances on a rainbow, the brute special for father's day. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Let me think about that. Annie McCallum says, EVS, can we get uh, Uche in a dressing gown figure? <laughs> I don't know. I think that would be a Geeks and Gamers uh, uh, thing if they wanted to do that. Uh, Ron Guerra says, put Heather in bikini and roller skates. Great idea. Um, let me see. Why don't you play piano anymore? Sal mug. Yeah, the Sal mug is so nice. Uh, here's $2. Buy something nice, says Josiah Haynes. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, tin box set says Neon Wolf. Possibly, possibility. Uh, Jackie Meyer says, What is the email for a missing eBay package? Holy cow. Cyberfroghelp at gmail.com. And we'll fix that right away. Right away. Cancel Jeremy says, I'm signed up, hi man. Shut up and take my money. And Eternal Shadow says, Excited for the frog toys, dude. All caps is metal. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I'm excited too. Uh, Michael Duce, uh, Dici says, any chance of a life-size inflatable chicken fist? No, no chance. Tatooine says, how does Cyberfrog poop after eating drum sticks? And he, oh, that's where the B at the end of drum came from. Uh, just fine, just normally. He's a frog. He's, you know, 
A salamandroid figure, please, says Jose M. We will get to it. Runguera says, I'm going to commit crimes to get Cyberfrog action figures. Uh, Brad Frederick says, is there going to be an executive tier? Probably, yes. I'll have a month to put together this campaign. Uh, C. Ant says, we never got the warts and all early sign-up card. It's on its way. It's part of your, when you get your warts and all uh, books, you'll see that the card is in there. Uh, Mighty Joe says, Haley BS got my eBay order Friday. Looked like he got run over by a truck, but everything was packed so well, no damage. Andrea, thanks. Great job. <laughs> what is going on with uh, the USPS running over packages uh, with their trucks? Mike S. Miller had a complaint about his uh, Starblades as well. Uh, George Philou says, buy Guardians of Havenshire from Philou Press, uh, putting the good back in fiction. Uh, Orbital 1970 Goat says, uh, there better be a trebuchet to go with the action figures. We could make a trebuchet. Why not? Jay Gat says, Colt Gang. Uh, Comic Should Be Good says, uh, oh, are you involved in Knife Hand? Yes, I'm involved in all Jawbreakers things the minute that Zach finishes fulfillment uh, and catches up with uh, his campaigns. It's going to be, uh, you know, this is the thing. Once those campaigns are fulfilled, we can go ahead and just do endless uh, Jawbreaker stuff. Uh, you know, it's easier, easier for Zach because really all he's got to do is come up with an idea and write it. Uh, and we will go ahead and, and you know, if he doesn't have an artist, we'll find an artist. We'll make sure the artist gets the book done. Uh, and then we will fulfill it. We'll print it and fulfill it. So it's going to make his life a lot easier. Grantee's Nuts says, good thing I caught you while lunch, while on lunch break, just signed up for the toys. How goes fulfillment season? Dude, fulfillment season is crazy. We're uh, currently fulfilling Salamandroid PVCs to people who back single Salamandroids. Uh, so we're working on the Wreck Planet campaign. Uh, we'll take a pause on that this week on Wednesday. Uh, warts and all trading card binders do arrive at our warehouse. Uh, we will take a, a day to uh, you know organize our stock. And then Thursday, starting Thursday, we will be packing and shipping warts and all executive uh, perk, uh, uh, executive tier perks. Uh, and it's 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 going to be awesome. I cannot wait. Uh, Leo Slayer of SJW Weirdo says, "Can you tell us about your Ripaverse involvement?" Uh, I don't really have any yet. Uh, I told uh, I told uh, Eric that I would be willing to help him in any capacity. Uh, so uh, that's you know that's I haven't really heard anything else about that. But uh, we have talked about it. I'm I'm open to help him in any way that he needs my help. Absolutely, I'm a big fan of his, and I, I want to see him win. Uh, Timothy Fitzgerald says, "Hell, EVS, I got my Keon shirt and Blood Honey this week. They look uh, great. Thanks." My four-year-old daughter was really taken with Cyberfrog and Sal. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, the uh, Dale Keown shirts, we still have some. They're on our eBay channel. I'll show you those, our eBay store. Uh, and uh, we're running out of them, but we're going to have the Salamandroid shirts in probably next week. So uh, they'll be up on our eBay store as well. Uh, what's going on with Charlie Snogan's family? Are they holding up okay? Says ID Crisis. I don't know. I'm not sure. What's wrong with Charlie Snogan's family? I haven't heard anything. Uh, Flix by Cody says, despite being big, your nose is very handsome and dashing. It's a gentleman's nose. That's kind of you to say, Cody. Uh, Jeremy Lederman says, hey, amigo, ever taking a visit to your P.O. box? You asked us to remind you. Uh, I have to go to my P.O. box this week because let's see if there are any Starblades returns will come to my P.O. box. Like if they didn't, if they got messed up somehow, and didn't arrive in their destination, they'll be in my PO box. So I'm going to go there Monday, and I will see what the situation is. And then if you guys sent me any gifts, I'll be able to go uh, get those as well. Uh, Adrian Stone says, "Hey, next month will mark two years for your channel membership. It's time to unleash uh, unleash a Fez badge for season members." That sounds interesting, Adrian. <clears throat> Let's talk about that. We need to make a badge. Cumberbatch Pepper Pot says, will Dale do a comic skate book? Can't seem to commission. Uh, yes, uh, Dale is doing. All right. So Dale Keown right now is drawing a bunch of cyber frog stuff. Whatever comes into his head, he just kind of draws it. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, he drew a great close up of cyber frog's face, like looking at a wasp on his finger that is just. Let me see if I can show you that. <clears throat> I don't know if I've shown it on my channel yet. Uh, wait a second here. What is this? No, that's my Odyssey channel. Let me see.
Sorry about that. All right, let's try again. Let's try that again. Uh, let me see my Patreon. Patreon is where I show everything. I do, you know, whatever I have, uh, I show. If you're my Patreon uh, patron, uh, you see stuff in advance of uh, other people. It's a privilege. Let me open image and new tab. <clears throat> I don't talk as well anymore. It takes a lot. Of, you know, I, I lose my voice too quickly lately. I really need to get back into the uh, into the game of live streaming and making videos every single day. I'm quiet. I'm sitting there working on my work. Uh, all right. So here's uh, Dale Keown just did this for fun. And I think I'm going to use this as some kind of a cover. Uh, he is going to ink it and he wants to color it himself because he's like, what if he's got like red lighting right here under his face? I'm like, that would be fucking awesome. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, Dale's doing this. Uh, he's doing um, a wraparound cover for Cyberfrog 3. So instead of Jay Lee, we're going to have Dale Keown's beautiful wraparound cover for Cyberfrog 3, Red Extermination is what the book is called. Uh, and then he has agreed to do 20 pages. So uh, I'm thinking it's going to be a 20-page Salamandroid story. However, uh, I will tell you this. Dale Keown has quite flirtatiously uh, sent me images of Cyberfrog toys playing with his pit toy. Uh, and we have talked about Salamandroid versus Pit. And he has ideas for that. So, uh, you know, it's like, I don't want to... Uh, listen, here's the whole thing. I don't want to sit there and go, yes, let's do... Okay, if he wants to, we can do it. I'm not going to push him. He's agreed to do 20 pages. As far as I'm concerned, it's just Salamandroid or Cyberfrog right now. It could be Pit. <clears throat> it could be. But it's going to be uh, him saying, I want to do it. If he says to me, I want to do that, I will say, let's do it. Uh, and that is, uh, that's the way it goes. But until then, we are going to get a 20-page book out of him, maybe more. Because I also kind of said, what if we made it a four-issue miniseries? And he said, okay. Uh, you know, so <laughs> it's going to be great. Whatever it is, it's going to be great to get a, to get a, a nice, complete Dale Keown frog or salamander something. Mm. All right. So I'll get back to the, uh, I'll, I'll do more um, super chats in a moment. Let me show you what, uh, what went on with John Della Rose. <clears throat> John Della Rose, controversial figure in comics. Uh, <laughs> this is amazing to me. I, I have to talk about this. John Della Rose was banned from a convention called Worldcon. I've never heard of Worldcon, but I guess it's a big, uh, convention for authors. Uh, he was banned from it and they called him a racist. Uh, and John Delarose, I think would be quick to tell you he is not a racist. Uh, but in any case, uh, this is not something that a convention should be doing. They should not be banning people uh, from conventions for their political beliefs. They just shouldn't. So John Delarose found uh, some attorneys who apparently took on his case pro bono and uh, sued them. Uh, which I think is uh, uh, what you should do when a big, enormous uh, convention like this bans you for political reasons, for thought crimes. This is, you know, just not a not a great situation. But in any case, this went on and on and on. But today, after refusing to let it go, as most spineless conservatives would, this is PJ Media, Delarose fought for his reputation in court. Now Worldcon has agreed to pay him $4,000 and issued this apology. Uh, SFSFC acknowledges the importance of reputation, especially for a relatively new author, and regrets that its public statement about barring his attendance might have led people unfamiliar with uh, Mr. Delarose and his work to infer that he is or was a racist. Uh, for that, <laughs> SFSFC apologizes. This attendance ban was specific to the Worldcon. 76 events produce whatever. And Mr. Uh, Delarose has the same opportunity as other members uh, of the public to register for future events. Worldcon 76 does not tolerate discrimination in any form, including through cosplay, based on but not limited to gender, race, ethnicity, religion, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, or physical mental health conditions. Uh, the SFSFC firmly believes that healthy political discourse requires actual or active Mutual good faith participation by members of the community with differing opinions. So that's great. Uh, <clears throat> what's wonderful about this uh, is the SJWs crying about it. 
Uh, I read the uh, responses to this, the reactions to it, and it was great. These are uh, some uh, people responding. John Delarose is dead to me. I would trust advice from him on diversity inclusion about as far as I could throw him into an active volcano. Why do you want to throw John Delarose? Well, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I want to throw him into an active volcano too. But uh, anyway, uh, let me see. This right here. This is amazing. Hold on. Let me find this. People's reactions to this are astonishing. Like they're entitled to ban you from a convention. Who is this guy and what was the issue? Uh, Megan Fox, of course, a conservative uh, journalist, says he was defamed by WorldCon. Uh, this person here, well, that sucks. And JDA's victory lap is going to be ugly. I'm worried about whether this will make future cons hesitant to enforce their own codes of conduct. You, I mean, can you believe he was banned? He was banned from a convention. He was called racist by a convention. No convention should be doing that. That is crazy. Uh, didn't he crowdfund more than uh, from following? Okay, blah, blah, blah. His lawyer was pro bono. Let me see. You ever realize that the U.S. court system and actual justice are two very different things? Truth. Yeah, if it were justice, SJWs would just be able to gatekeep everybody from everything for their politics. If only this was justice. Uh, people are complaining. God damn it. They're very upset. Look at all these people who have blocked me. <laughs> I can't read all of this stuff. I think, uh, you know, JDA's enemies and mine travel in similar circles. Uh, so that is interesting. Oh, liberals are upset. Very good. Let me see if there's any more. Uh, oh, fuck Del Ars. <laughs> so anyway, John, uh, I, I will say this. No matter how you feel about John Delarose, let me see the quote tweets. He has extracted an incredible victory. Uh, and salt from these people. This is the bad precedent and a bad outcome that people could, uh, you know, that, that John Delarose would be able to uh, fight back against being blocked from a convention. Wow, this is such a bad move. It means it'll never be safe for me to go to Wilcon. And he doesn't even target me for my race just for the neps. What does that mean? What the heck is going on over there? Thanks. I hate it. Well, that really sucks, but it's probably the least expense and hassle in the, okay, uh, to cope with that. Uh, you know, let me see. <laughs> More proof that the U.S. legal system is fatally flawed. Well, crap, for fuck's sake. What a ridiculous load of tosh. But Dell Attention Seeker will trumpet this as a major triumph. Well, so will I, frankly. And by the way, I can't believe this is true, but it is true all the time. And do not contact this person. Who cares? But I will say. I've said over and over again that uh, SJW males have three cliches. Some of you know, uh, some of you know what these three cliched avatars are. First one is a cutesy cartoon of self, uh, which suggests that they are harmless and cute and fun and you know safe to be around your kids. That's the first one, a little cartoony avatar. Second one is. A close-up of, uh, you know, you holding, uh, or the uh, the soy boy holding a beloved family pet close to his face and looking like he's about to cry. It could be a cat. It could be a dog. It could be a parakeet. You know, it could be a, a squirrel. It could be any kind of varmint. Uh, but that is uh, soy boy avatar cliche number two. And, and number three is covering the lower half of your face uh, with a cup, with a mug, with a book something. I don't know why they do this. Why would this be the photograph that you choose? And yet they all do it. I don't understand. Why? Just wait three seconds until the cup is down in the saucer again so we can see your entire face. What are you hiding? Why do they do this? This doesn't look cool. Pardon me. I was just sipping my tea. I didn't realize that my social media avatar photograph was being snapped at this exact moment. Well, that's me, you know, just uh, carefree, not really paying attention, don't really care, don't give a damn. Hey, how about this? I don't really give a damn about my Twitter social media avatar. I'll just drink tea. I'll just drink a cup of tea or coffee while it's being taken. Get me. Hmm? Fuck, I can't stand that I'm always right. It's weird. You know what? It makes me feel like people are all like, uh, you know, 
robots. These people are NPCs. They all do behave the same way. I don't really get it. Uh, all right, let me see here. Let me read some more uh, super chats. So anyway, congratulations uh, to John Delarose for making SJWs cry that way. Uh, I do, uh, I do like that. I think that was uh, uh, worth your time. Amateur Ant says EVS Expendables has been about a year late because Richard C. Wade wants to make a bunch of horse crap like 499 and Plandemic and not fulfill on hopefully better comics. Shaking my damn head, he's a disappointment. I feel, uh, I feel that you, uh, amateur ant, I, I sense some disappointment in you. I, I sense some upsetness. Well, I, I, uh, I hear you. Uh, I would like to see all of these books get fulfilled, uh, right away so that we can get back on track with making great jawbreakers books. Uh, and I hope that, uh, once he does fulfill all of these books, uh, and they are excellent as you are expecting, uh, you will give us a chance with all caps, comics, jawbreakers. I hope you'll do that. Uh, ben with said skills says, uh, will there be a way to get the erasers if we didn't get the lunchbox? I would like to get them for uh, my daughter. She hates unicorns. Yeah, because I'm going to make uh, more unicorn heads than I have lunchboxes for. So we, I will put them. I'll probably put them on eBay. Absolutely. H is for heretic says, yes, Sal build a figure. Oh, that's what BAF stood for. Sal build a figure. No take backs. We considered it. We thought about it, you know, I just thought, well, what if people just want to buy Salamandroid and don't want to build uh, the Salamandroid figure, but it's, uh, let me, let me, let me think about it some more. Uh, Steven says, give Andrea a hug for me. She finally got my copy of Blood Honey to me that was lost by the USPS because of lockdowns. Loved it, by the way. Thank you, Steven. Yeah, we will get your book to you. Somebody actually reached out to us and said, uh, it'd be great. If I could get my blood, honey, I didn't get it. It's been two years and it's just like, holy shit. Well, like, uh, what happened? And, you know, it's like, well, we moved in the intervening time that, you know, there's a new, ad so we definitely shipped them their book, but, uh, you know, let us know. Uh, we were happy to find, uh, that order and, uh, ship it. I think I had to do a sketch. I had a sketch in there. So I sat down and I did a new sketch and we made sure that that order went out. You, if you're if you're sitting on resentment because you didn't get the book that you ordered, please tell us. We don't want you to hate us. We want you to love us. We'll make sure that you get what it is uh, is due to you uh, that you you backed us for. Uh, I, I actually heard some like scary things early on, like people like I don't, I didn't get my order, but I don't want to bother him. No, bother us. We'll we'll get you your order. We care about you guys. We want you to read Cyber Frog. Uh, all right, let me see. Um, Oh, I think that's it. I think that's, are we all caught up? I think we're basically all caught up now. The super chats, maybe one more. Let me just double check. Uh, hail Andrea, not Ethan. Uh, so Ethan, Indiegogo, the Sal, uh, build a figure. What do you mean, hail Andrea, not Ethan? Uh, let me see. Headrock says, I gave my super chat virginity to Cecil. Uh, I am sure that you're uh, heartbroken about it. Here's some money to compensate. Thank you for everything, Uncle Huge Bottom. Oh, it's just some uh, filth being sent my way here. Uh, thank you very much, Head Rock. And then thank you, Deltaverse Comics as well. Appreciate you guys. Um, all right. So, what else did I want to talk about? Do I want to talk about any more of this uh, awful news that's going on? Do I want to talk about Ari Agbayani, the fourth regional Captain America character? whose name translates to pretty vagina. And it is true. Evidently. Oh, I mean, this is bizarre. I can't stand these people. Marvel comics is out of control. Uh, let me show you this. Why did they do it? Why, why bother with this? Why make all these awful fake captain America characters here. Uh, Marvel unveils Phil female Filipino college student, Ari Agbayani. Yanni as fourth regional Captain America. Uh, let me just say something. <clears throat> I am not afraid of her. Not at all. Uh, let's say that I was an evildoer. Imagine that. Imagine the prospect of me being an evildoer. Uh, and I were committing a crime. And uh, this character were there to stop me. I would beat the living shit out of this fake Captain America. 
I would give this Captain America, I'd be like, bitch, you know where I'm from? New Jersey. That's where I'm from. I would, I would slap the living shit out of this fake Captain America. I would. I would because I, you know, I was a super villain. Not even a super villain, just a villain. Just a, you know, what would I do? I'd be the type of villain that goes to, uh, uh, I'd go to gas stations and I'd hold them up for cigarette cartons of cigarettes. That's I'd be very low. Uh, I'd be very low stakes. But if this Captain America showed up, I would, I would pimp slap this little bitch. I'd be like, you're not Steve Rogers. Your name is Ari Agbayani, which translates to pretty vagina. That is weird. Yeah, I'd be goon level. <laughs> I'd just be a goon. What is this? Uh, created by Overwatch and Dr. Afro writer Alyssa Wong. Oh, fuck. Uh, area set to debut in the United States of Captain America number four. Crossing paths with Steve Rogers, Sam Wilson, Bucky Barnes, and John Walker as the four Star Spangled Avengers travel the United States in pursuit of a thief who has stolen Captain America's shield. If if this child stole your shield, Cap, what the hell is going on? Hmm. Uh, I immediately knew I wanted to write a Filipino American girl. Hmm. When editor Alana Smith uh, approached me about creating a new local Captain America for the series, I immediately knew I wanted to write a Filipino American girl. I see those initials. Uh, there just aren't very many of us in comics, so that's every reason. You know, when uh, the entire reason to only focus on identity. Every reason to just sit there and go, uh, I want to uh, make a comic for an audience that there uh, isn't. It doesn't exist. I grew up without a Filipino-American community for the most part. So every time I see a Filipino character, I get excited. And getting to create one, a Captain America even, feels incredibly special. Well, I'm glad you're happy. I feel just a mixture of sadness, boredom, nausea, a little dyspepsia, as it were, a little dyspepsia. Wong added, Ari Agbayani is a scholarship student at a small private university. When she finds out her best friend is being victimized by a wealthy legacy student who's probably white and blonde, Ari is determined to make things right. You got to stop us, white, blonde males. You have to stop us. We're causing all kinds of trouble for everyone. I'm like, what? What is this? You know, a person of another ethnicity or sexual preference that isn't causing me any trouble at all? How can I ruin their day? How can I harass them? How can I assault them? This is a weird world that they live in. SJWs live in a bizarre world. You know? I don't, I don't really understand. I don't want to. I don't want to understand. All I want to do is beat SJWs. Uh, <clears throat> mostly this way. Uh, I want to beat them with Cyberfrog action figures, wave one. This is what we are launching today. Just the email signup list. Just the email signup list for Captain, uh, for Captain, for Cyberfrog action figures, wave one. Much better than Captain America. <laughs> When the monster you created comes back to bite you in the ass. <laughs> what I say in this disclosure? What? Y'all are stupid, you get shoulder. Cause your plan was to get over. Since the days of Victrola. All the years of straight lies and depriving. Now we're pushing to take a dive and conniving. We should never hear any cries from the guys. When independence we rise and high steady surviving. Never ever had an artist want to spray us. Cause when they do the work, they know we pay up. And I see the labels getting set to bust. Cause the people That's right. Sign up today uh, for the Cyberfrog uh, action figure wave one campaign on Indiegogo.
just sign up. Just give me your email address so that I can alert you. I can say, oh, get ready, guys. We're going to launch tomorrow. Guys, get ready. Tomorrow we launch. Tomorrow we launch this incredible campaign for some of the finest toys that you've ever seen from our independent uh, movement, Comic Skate slash all caps comics, Cyber Frog. Here it is. Sign up early, receive exclusive chicken fist with pre order. You're going to get this fist and you're going to get this bucket. And you're going to say, hell yeah. Chicken fry accessory hand holding drum stick. Oh, it says drum right here. That I got to fix that. I got to fix that. Uh, but yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is uh, this is what you'll be receiving once you sign up. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Uh, and uh, thank you uh, very, very much. Hold on. Let me take a look at Downcast really quick here. Are you guys backing Downcast? Are you backing? Yes, you are. Five new backers for Clint Stoker. $19 away from 19000 as Clint Stoker approaches $20,000 $20, on Downcast 3 Submerged. Another success story. Another amazing success story for Clint Stoker, who is the grandson of the creator of Dracula. You know, once Clint gets this funded and uh, gets this book done, he's going to be working on his magnum opus, uh, which is Dracula versus King Kong. Because Clint Stoker is a direct descendant of Bram Stoker, uh, Clint Stoker knows that it is his duty to carry on the Dracula legacy, uh, the icon, uh, into the 21st century as only he can. He has every right to do it. These other posers do not. Clint Stoker has every right to do Dracula, and he wants Dracula to fight King Kong. I don't blame him. So that's going to get started. That'll happen once Clint Stoker gets down, cast three, submerged, completely funded. Uh, I think it is completely funded, but I mean overfunded. He needs to be, uh, where does this need to get? I'll do a little research. I'll find out where downcast two landed and we're going to beat that. We're going to beat that with downcast three. We need that to happen. We can make that happen together. Uh, all right. Uh, let me just see what you guys are saying. Uh, here, let me see. Uh, give her raccoon eyes. Uh, let me see. Sheila Aliens is here. She says, I am not to be nice cat eyes on you. She says, I am not to be held responsible, uh, responsible if I accidentally mute or ban someone. Uh, I just got my nails did. Interesting. Uh, what a drum bass, uh, says Trevor Bruce. Thank you very much for that. It's uh, ridiculous. I will fix that. I will fix drum stick. I was wondering where that all came from. Yeah. Uh, is Tech Nine EVS's favorite rapper? No, Mace is. Puffy and Mace. I like Mace. I don't know. I like a lot of different rappers. Bootleg Cyberfrog figure on eBay for $350. No. No, no, no. Not at all. Sherlock Holmes versus the Plague of Dracula at last, uh, says Tom Tuttle. That would be funny. Let's get that illustrated. Clint smoking Mitch's campaign more than twice over. Uh, uh, Mitch Breitweiser has a new campaign. Cool. Uh, go check it out. Uh, let me see. Grandson. Wasn't Dracula written in the 1800s? We don't always... We're not always factually accurate around here. When I say that Clint Stoker is the grandson of Bram Stoker, you might do a little research and go generationally. That's not possible. Uh, you know, he's a young man. Uh, Dracula was written in the 800s. Really, he could be great, 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 great. And you could trail it all the way back and we can make it, you know, more accurate. But when I say he is Bram Stoker's grandson, I mean that more in a spiritual sense. Yes, there is a blood relation. That is factual. Uh, but it's not that close. Many generations have elapsed. And yet Clint Stoker still has the spirit of storytelling within him. Uh, Rare Ringu says, uh, Ethan, are you going to do another print run of Unfrog? Oh, you mean Unforgettable Tales number one, which is sold out now, entirely sold out. Uh, we have a line art variant of Unforgettable Tales number one. I do not know if I'm going to reprint Unforgettable Tales number one with a foil cover. I would say no. I would say probably not. Let's keep them rare. I would say eventually I will do a collected edition of uh, Unforgettable Tales 1 through 3, you know, with maybe a new shiny cover on it. Yes, it is my truth. <laughs> no, it is not. Let me see. Uh, some people are saying, just admit you're wrong. I will never admit I'm wrong. 
I will find a justification uh, to uh, continue the lie going that Clint Stoker uh, is grandson of Bram Stoker. It just sounds good. People hear that and they go, what, really? Is that true? Uh, let me see. Cumberbatch Pepper Pot says, does Mitch's book come with a red Walmart greeter's vest? Uh, no, it doesn't because Walmart greeter's vests are blue. Factually, they are blue. Christopher Gore says, uh, that clown hut posted a video today attacking John Malin for something Malin cleared up months ago. Pathetic. Uh, <laughs> comic book hut. Uh, Trevor Bruce says, what a drum bass. A Nasser Rabadi gives me a little frog. Thank you, Nasser. Uh, Mr. Son of a Gun says, can't wait for the figures, Ethan. What are your thoughts on the latest fandom menace drama today between Ryan Kinnell and Doomcock? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Send it my way. <laughs> if there's a video, let me watch it. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on with the fandom menace. To me, the fandom menace lives in my heart. Uh, I, I see these guys and I'm just like, uh, I don't know what you're doing anymore. I don't know what your purpose is. If uh, Star Wars needs a smackdown, I'm right here to deliver it. You know, it might not be right now. Now might not be the time. Uh, but when it comes time uh, for another Star Wars smackdown, I will be here. I will be here. I'll be there. I'll be there. To make fun of Ryan Johnson, I'll be there to call Kathleen Kennedy a pig. Just call my name, and I'll put on my wig. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that whole thing, but Ryan Kinnell's pretty funny. Uh, Doomcock is saying some crazy... I know that Doomcock's been releasing a lot of videos that uh, are maybe speciously sourced. I'm not really sure. I, it, it, he doesn't turn out to be correct very often. So I don't really know. Uh, Shane Davis says he's excited for the figures. Hey, thank you, Shane. Thank you. I'm excited too. Um, Hail Caesar. What is happening? Says Louis Folite. I don't know. I'm always the worst person to ask about that. I don't know what's happening ever with anything. The one thing that uh, is unfortunate uh, is that working as hard as I'm working, and it is hard. I'm, I'm drawing pages. I'm trying to get Rec Planet finished. Rec Planet I, needs to be finished. I want it to be done. I want. I want a new comic book. I want it, and it's good. I think it's good. I think it's good. There was one sequence where I, you know I was like, okay, so you know, the mother of this child gets eviscerated by Vespas, should the child get away? And I had to think about that. And I went, no, child does not get away. Child does not get away. That is where we're going uh, with this. Uh, if the mother is torn to pieces in front of her child by the Vespas as she screams at him to run, uh, and he runs, does he get away? Now, if this were a Spielberg movie, yes, he would. But this is an Ethan Van Skyver comic. So no, he doesn't. He doesn't get away. Uh, they are the Vespas. They're not to be fucked with. Uh, so Wreck Planet is, is, uh, is going to be intense. I promise you. It's going to hurt your feelings. You are going to hate the villains. Uh, you know, uh, and, uh, hopefully, uh, you will be entertained. I think it's, uh, I think it's going to be good. Uh, all right, let me see. And that child was Hunter Biden. Ryan Kinnell is a make a wish graduate. What's a make a wish graduate? 7,000 member live streams. Uh, they're doing better than most. Um, yeah. Oh, you mean the, uh, Friday night tights? Hell yeah. They're doing great. Uh, let me see. So dark. Are you sure you're not from the DC universe? Well, I mean, look. Uh, Software X Comics says racism can't survive the Marvel Comics universe. Yeah. Everything is uh, everything is about race now. Everything is about race. I just, I can't wait to do, uh, you know, I want to do characters that are Filipino. I, I just, I think there needs to be more Filipino. 
what's the story? You notice I just told you uh, something that happens in Cyberfrog Wreck Planet, and at no time did I feel like I needed to tell you the race uh, of the mother and child. I just told you a mother and child, and that was enough to connect with you on that level. You didn't need to know the skin color. You didn't need to know. Now I will tell you, they are black Muslim lesbians in wheelchairs. Transgendered lesbians. Now how do you feel? Now that you know that the scene that I just described, in the scene that I just described, the mother and child were both fat, black, Muslim, transgender lesbians in wheelchairs. How do you feel now? Where's your empathy? Think about it. Does it make it better or worse? Better? <laughs> okay, cool. Welcome to Comic Skate. Uh, all right, let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. I got to see Mitch's new campaign. See what he's doing. Uh, Snarkcon DM says, uh, "I'm a Polak. Where's my Captain America?" Uh, that is a a Polish joke in and of itself. You know, if you are from Poland and you're looking for Captain America, why not Captain Poland? Why wouldn't you be looking for Captain Poland instead? Hmm. Uh, Toyline says, thank you for announcing that you will be on the podcast. We're very excited to meet you. We will sell Cyberfrog Toys. Congratulations, Ethan. Thank you, Toylines. I look forward to being on your show. I do look forward to it. Uh, and uh, let me see. Uh, sign up for... Wait, hold on a second here. Sign up for Butch Cleaver 2. And lock in your card, says Metal Movies and Brewskies. Make sure that you do sign up for that. Uh, <laughs> yes, everything is. Uh, life is funny. Uh, name some Polish inventions. Sausage. Polish sausage. Delicious. All right, I want to thank everyone for being here. I'm not making a Steve Bannon build a figure. Part of me wants to see how many people have signed up so far. Let me see. Should we find out how many people have signed up for this campaign or should we just not? Should we just not bother? Let me see. Ooh. All right. So let me ask you a question. Uh, we have announced that this campaign uh, is live. This uh, sign up email notification uh, list is live. Uh, and people have known about it for about an hour or two hours, about two hours now. How many people do you think, how many potential future backers do you think we have so far? Projects done poorly. Thanks for $10. Ultimate gay op. Caitlyn Jenner running for governor. Cat, dog, gas, traditional values, and is dating a trans woman. Does that make cat, dog, gay? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to accuse everyone of being gay. All the time. I've got SJWs asking me constantly, well, do you have any gay friends? Do you hang out with gay people? I'm like, I call all of them gay. I tell everyone that I hang out with that they're gay uh, constantly. Keaton Smith, thank you for a super sticker. Appreciate that. Listen, uh, if you're calling your friends gay every single day, how could you be homophobic? You're surrounded, you're surrounded by gay people that are your friends. Uh, Old Dirty Fatty says, it's very hard to get me to laugh out loud anymore. And you just made me look like some kind of maniac laughing to myself. Thank you, EBS. Oh, that's good. All right, let me see what people are, are guessing here. Um, what do you think we got? You think we got five five people signed up? Um, you think we got 500? You got three people? 12.5 people may have signed up. Hmm. Uh, one trillion people have signed up. Now, this is close. Getting closer with one trillion. Yeah, a lot of people have signed up so far. A lot of people. Uh, 1,050 1, signees. This is exactly correct. <laughs> How did you know? Can you see somehow? Can you see? 
Yeah, that's ex- well, one thousand fifty-three. That's not bad at all. Thank you, Improb. Amazing. Thank you so much, everyone who is signing up. This is that was weird. I didn't think anybody else could see the number, but maybe this guy can see the number because he got it just right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, if you have not yet signed up for the Cyberfrog action figure campaign, I'm going to ask you to do so. I'm going to ask you to do so because we are going to create action figures uh, that are that rival the very best action figures that you can find anywhere. I need your help. I need your help to do it. I need your help uh, to take this. This is a paint master of Cyberfrog here. Look at this exquisite, exquisite action figure. Let me turn him around carefully. Uh, look, he's even got his boot thrusters and his feet. Uh, I need your help to make this stuff a reality. I can't do it without you. I can't. I can't make a Heather Swain action figure uh, without your help. You guys, uh, I need you to support this campaign. I need you to start by signing up for the email notification list. Uh, when you sign up for the email notification list, you will be receiving a cute little gift. It's very cute. Look at this. You will be getting a chicken bucket accessory and a hand holding a chicken leg that you can swap out so that if you want to uh, portray Cyberfrog with a bucket of chicken under his arm and a chicken uh, drumstick in his hand eating some lunch, you can do that with your Cyberfrog action figure. Uh, sign up for the email notifications list and prepare. Put a little money aside, please. I know it's hard and it's a budget sometimes. Understand that the action figure is going to cost $40. The 90s Cyber Frog action figure is going to cost $40. Heather Swain is going to cost $40. And the Vespus here, uh, this enormous Vespus enemy toy, uh, fully articulated uh, and uh, totally kick-ass, will be $75. Uh, and we will uh, hope, I will hope, that you uh, are able to support this campaign uh, and make it so that we can get these action figures funded and happen. We can only do it with you. We can only do it with you. If we, if you know, if you guys don't want to do it, if you guys, uh, you know, are, don't want to be a part of it, we won't do it. We'll just stay with comic books and other things. But I think you're pretty excited about this. I think you're excited about taking a comic book company uh, that you were here on the ground floor uh, at. You joined me two years ago with Cyberfrog Blood Honey uh, at a time when I was just hoping I could get eight thousand dollars together to make a comic book, maybe. Uh, and we've made Cyberfrog into a fearsome brand uh, in indie comics. If you know, <laughs> whether however you feel about me, if you love me or if you loathe me, and there are people who loathe me, I mean, hate me and think about me every day, can't get me out of their brain, uh, and uh, those people know about Cyberfrog. People who love me know about Cyberfrog. We did that together. Everybody knows Cyberfrog now. It is a big brand. It's a very, very big brand. So do we want to take this to the next level? Do we want to make action figures? Do we want to make action figures that we can be proud of? Uh, you know, do we want to make action figures that can stand shoulder to shoulder with the people who make Marvel Legends and Todd McFarlane toys? We can do that. We're capable of doing that. We're capable of doing it, but, but I need your help. Okay, so uh, I'm hoping that uh, you will sign up for the email notifications list. I'd like to see that email notifications list hit 3,000 backers or at least signers within a month. I'd like to see that happen. We're already one third of the way there. Um, and once we do that, it looks like we should be able to uh, succeed at this. One month from uh, one month from the fourth, pretty much one month away. July 4th, Independence Day in the United States of America, we're going to launch the campaign for the Cyberfrog action figures, and we are going to take a, an enormous chance. We're gonna take a big risk. We're gonna see if we can do this, if we can soar to glory, if we can land on the fucking moon, uh, or if we will crash into the sea uh, with regret, bitter acrimony, I'm sure will ensue. Uh, can we do it? We're gonna find out on the 4th of July, and I'm gonna ask you guys to be there with me. I'm gonna ask for your support. Put the money aside uh, if you have it. <clears throat> uh, please put the money aside to back these toys. Uh, you know, and I promise you, I promise you an excellent product, excellent. And if you're not somebody who can play with toys, give them to your kids. Your kids are going to absolutely love them. Uh, so uh, that's the deal that we have. If you guys support me and uh, make this possible, I promise you a superior product, an excellent product that you were here on the ground floor to start. 
you've always been a part of this. Uh, we've been a team. We've been a family. I think All Caps Comics has uh, created a family atmosphere uh, with our customers. Uh, very grateful for you. All right, so let me check the uh, let me check the last bit of uh, super chattery, uh, super chatter, uh, and then uh, I'm going to get back to work. I got a lot to do. I'm trying my best to get Rec Planet done. Uh, will you make any translucent variants of Cyberfrog and the Vespa? Says Johnny Ohm. Well, uh, <clears throat> that will be something that we do if we are enormously successful, uh, and then you know I will make some variants. Uh, Cumberbatch Pepperpot says, do you realize that Heather and Cyberfrog still be right on, wait, will be right on Cecil's human centipede? They better not be. Uh, Raging Golden Eagle says, not even the SJWs made food accessories for their non-existent action figures yet, preemptively beating them at their own game. Yes, Raging Golden Eagle, and you will too. I know it. Primetime Bolton says, congratulations, Ethan. I want some toys. Just a reminder, Viking Wolf is live on Indiegogo. That's Viking Wolf on Indiegogo. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Keaton Smith sent me a sunshine, uh, and I'm grateful for that as well. I like that. Nice and, uh, nice and sunny and optimistic. All right. So, uh, spread the link around, tell people about it. Let's see if we can get 3000 signers. I will tell you guys where we are at at all times. The link is below in the description. Also, um, while, uh, while they're available, oh, I should tell people about this too. Andrea is like, are you, are you promoting t-shirts? I'm like, uh, yes. And then sometimes I forget to do that. So I actually do need to do that. Hold on a minute here. See other items. Um, our eBay store is called Cyberfrog 9. And I will tell you this, we work to make uh, Alan. Uh, we are in contact with our customers. We make sure that they receive their orders promptly. We ship out the same day. If you back tonight, your order will go out tomorrow. If you back tomorrow, your order will go out tomorrow. That's how it is around here. And we make sure... Uh, that all of our customers are taken care of quickly. Uh, so uh, this is uh, Cyberfrog 9, our eBay store. Uh, and as you can see, we've got all the books. If you want to back a copy of Cyberfrog Blood Honey, you're going to get a signed copy from us here. Uh, we do have, I think we have four boxes of these left. So we're, we're okay with the team up variant. Uh, this is what we're promoting. Oh, we also have, look at the shiny Salamandroid Chromium variants. We have a few of these. We might have half a box of these left. They're going pretty quick. Uh, Cyberfrog t-shirt with Dale Keown artwork. As you can see, we've sold 277 of these. 277. Uh, I will tell you we are about halfway through our supply. Uh, if you have not uh, purchased a Dale Keown Cyberfrog t-shirt yet, um, now would be a good time to do so. Uh, we do have a limited supply. We are not going to go back to print on these. Uh, we are just printing 600 of everything and then just kind of uh, leaving it at that. Uh, make sure that you get one of these. They are high quality. Everyone who has received one loves one. Uh, the sizes are pretty true this time. So uh, feel free to just back what uh, the size that you normally wear. Very high quality, beautiful, beautiful print job. Uh, silver ink on the back of the Cyberfrog logo here. Uh, the all caps logo in uh, you know black, white, and yellow on the sleeve. Uh, you know, we I, I really just aspired to make a T-shirt that looked like something that you would get at, say, Universal Studios if you just got off Cyberfrog the ride, which would be the most kick-ass roller coaster in the world. You get off of there, you get like a really, really nice uh, company T-shirt, like a you know nice thing, a souvenir that you could take home. Uh, that's what this is, and I promise you, you will be satisfied with it. Uh, we have uh, about three hundred of them left, so um, make sure. Let me see. Let me double check the. Uh, let me dox my customers here. Uh, okay, so 55 of my customers were three XLs. 50, that's a lot of fat people. Let me just check this here. Extra small, I only printed 25 of these. Only three extra small petite individuals. Uh, so we've got uh, three small people. Uh, double XL, yeah, uh, 59 of those sold. A lot of fat people. I mean, you guys are the same people who call me fat. I made 150 XLs. This is normal size, I would say. This is, uh, all right, so we sold uh, 67 of those, 67 to XL, uh, large. All right, so let me just look at small. We sold six small, so we do have some petite people in our audience, but very few. Uh, most of you are like me, honestly, and you sit there and call me fat, and you're just as fat as I am. In fact, more so. I wouldn't wear a 3XL. I wear a 2XL. Mostly an XL, but you know, 2XL, comfortably. 
Uh, anyway, so uh, <laughs> get a Cyber Frog t-shirt. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for all of your support. <clears throat> Let me see. Are they fat or are they really beefy? You guys are just pleasantly plump. That's all I could say. Pleasantly plump, lovable, wonderful, wonderful people. Um, hold on a second here. A couple more super chats. Uh, Richard Zavala says, Hey, Ethan, love you, man. Can I get a time frame? Uh, I'll get my warts and all book. If you ordered it, oh, I'm so happy you asked. We are getting our trading card binders on Wednesday. We are shipping warts and all Thursday. What can I tell you? You're going to have it not this coming week. You'll have it in your hands next week. Okay. Uh, and you will be happy because it is going to be the most fun package. Uh, I don't know if we can, if you can see it, but right over there, we've got, uh, all of the contents of Warts and All are splayed out on that table a little bit there. See that big Heather Swain box? That is the package that your Warts and All, I'm touching it with my finger. That is the package that your Warts and All um, Executive Edition uh, will come in. So very excited about shipping those out. Next week, Thursday, Thursday, we're going to start doing that. Um, Bomagrad says, Hail Frogfather Ethan, I am late to discovering you and your channel. Do you have any all caps comics hats left? Maybe a slightly defective hat. Uh, the, uh, like the ones that I'm wearing right now, um, this, uh, we did order a new series of these cause I under ordered them. I ordered like 140 of them and it's just, it wasn't enough. So, uh, I, I sent back, I sent them back to press 288 of them are on their way. Uh, they will be here July 6th. Uh, they're being manufactured right now. So July 6th, we will have 288 more all caps comics, baseball caps that will arrive on our eBay store. I will let you know when they are there. Uh, and so uh, you'll be able to get one. Um, thank you again. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. Please don't forget to sign up for the campaign. Tell people about it. Um, back Clint Stoker's Downcast, back Snowman Creed, back Rainbow the Brute, if you haven't backed that yet. That's going to be enormous. Uh, appreciate and love you guys. And I will see you again soon uh, with another video. Let's get back to work. <laughs>